The National Resource for Network Biology is a biomedical technology research center funded by the National Institutes of Health. The goal of the National Resource is to provide computational tools and software that enable scientists to map and model biological networks and then to explore how these networks can be used to promote human health and prevent disease. The Human Genome Project determined that there is about 30,000 genes in a human cell, but it didn't at all address how those different genes are connected in networks. The next challenge uh, coming down the pike is to develop technologies that allow you to measure how different genes interact among themselves and with proteins and small molecules. So one of the things that network biology has done for us to understand a particular human disease is, is uh, our work on autism. We collaborated with a researcher at the Hospital for Sick Children in Toronto, Steve Scherer, who has mapped mutations in children with autism and compared them to children who don't have autism. And one of the most amazing things that we found was that if we looked at individual genes, we couldn't find any genes that were mutated over and over again in autism. There was no signal there. But when we looked at the system, a network of how those genes were connected, we could understand how that network was connected to autism. One of the amazing things about working with networks is that it's a methodology that can be applied at many different levels. And so you can apply it at the genetic level, you can apply it at the level of individual neurons, or you can do what I do and apply it at the level of individual people. Just like neurons have connections to one another, people have connections to one another. We form friendships, we form relationships with our neighbors, with our coworkers, and these relationships have a fundamental impact on human behavior and human health. And we've found that all kinds of health behaviors can spread obesity, smoking behavior, drinking behavior, a number of modifiable factors that if we could harness the power of social networks would help us to reverse these epidemics that have such a detrimental impact on the health of our society. Many of us who were involved in the National Resource for Network Biology got together a few years ago and uh, pioneered some software that we call Cytoscape. Cytoscape allows you to take many different diverse network measurements that one can make experimentally in the lab, integrate them all together, then to use these uh, models of networks and pathways to understand better human health and to also understand how these networks go awry in diseases. Cytoscape started about 10 years ago just with a grassroots effort of scientists who are interested in network biology. And now we have gotten funding from the NIH to create a national resource that allows us to take Cytoscape to the next level and make it available in every lab. It's a little bit like you're trying to understand how a car works and someone gives you a parts list that tells you there's a steering wheel over here and there's a drive shaft here, there's a speedometer here, but no one told you how the speedometer and the steering wheel and the drive shaft and the wheels and the engine all fit together. Given the parts the human genome provides us, we have to now somehow figure out how they're all connected to make the full person. Networks are really ideal, they're an ideal medium for data mapping and visualization of biological data, whether that's expression data or proteomics data or metabolomics data. They provide that framework for interpretation, but also for integrating different types of data and, and, and getting a, a picture of what's going on. You know, Agilent and Cytoscape share some core values of support for collaboration and community and the belief that to solve complex biological problems is going to take integration across all these diverse data. Um, that's why we've been a member of the Cytoscape Consortium for a number of years and why we're really excited about the future with the National Resource for Network Biology. Most diseases are what they call complex, which means that they involve not a single gene, but they involve vast combinations of genes connected together into networks, uh, aka circuits or wiring diagrams inside of, of cells. We're going to have to first understand not only what are the individual genes that play in, in those diseases, but how those genes and their products come together in, in networks. So one of the reasons why Cytoscape is so successful is because it's open source. It's the only network tool that I'm aware of that is open source. And that doesn't just mean that Cytoscape is freely available for everyone to take and use. It actually creates a community of users around Cytoscape that can share information and share experiences and build a better tool. I mean, that's really why uh, a resource, a national resource for network biology is so important because we need to be thinking not just about individuals, but about the people those individuals are connected to.